that's what I wanted to do, now I know better, right? But you need to have that mindset that you want to put yourself in that position, right? What? Because at the end, of it, you're not going to live forever, right? You always want to be thinking and prepared. I like to think way ahead. Next. So the strategic mindset there then for the strategic mission is that you need to be extremely focused on the one or two things you need to do. You need to be extremely urgent because there is this really is a marathon, but it starts as a sprint. And you have to have extreme work ethic. It's all a mindset. You know, you can do, you can be better than me, but I can outwork you. It's a mindset, right? How many people have we seen that are better? I've seen a lot of people better than me, man. A lot of people. But I can outwork you. I can outwork you. I can outthink you in terms of, you know, the, the staying focused. I can out urgency you. <laughs> These three ingredients are critical in your mindset. If you don't have these three things, you are not going to get big. Does that make sense? Next. Then you have tactic. And the tactic, the tactical plan is to be simplified to multiply. Simplify to multiply. Next. This is the McDonald's menu in 1974. This is 20 years after they were founded. Look at that. They have a burger, they have a bigger burger, a burger with two patties, a burger with cheese, and a burger with no cheese. And they had a filet of fish for the Catholic crowd for Friday. That's it. And coffee and right? Do you see breakfast? Do you see salads? Do you see... Uh, no! Right? They were so focused on doing one thing better than anybody else and just adding outlet after outlet after outlet after outlet after outlet that they became dominant to the point where they sell more of anything than anybody else if they choose to get into that. We're gonna do chicken, more chicken than anybody else. We're gonna do fries, more fries than anybody else. We're gonna do, now they're competing with Starbucks with coffee, believe it or not, because they figure they can sell it at half price. And I'm gonna be fancy, right? Ours are not gonna be named in Italian. You need to ha have a mindset, right, that you need to be completely focused, right, on growth. Next. So your tactical mindset, there are some definitions, right, that you have to have very clear. Number one, a recruit is not a recruit until they have a recruit. Right? So with that mindset, and we said, oh, we had 10 recruits, I double digited last month. All right, how many of them had a recruit? That's a complete, you, you know, that would be like net recruits, right? That's, a, that's one filter that we need to be using every month. The other filter is a lead, you know, we're a hybrid of, a, you know, we, we have, we're, we're, a, we're a financial services company that uses network marketing tactics, right? I mean, we have to understand that. So we have borrowed terms from network marketing, like a leg. I mean, this is a leg, <laughs> okay? But a leg is when I recruit a person, right? And then I recruit under them. Does that make sense? A leg is not a leg until it's at least four deep. So how many, le how many legs do you have? Right? You have two. Right? You better not have one. Your favorite restaurant is IHOP. Because <laughs> that's the next definition, team. You do not have a team unless you have four legs. Unless you have four legs that are at least four deep, license deep, you ain't got no team yet. So don't be talking, no, me and my team, what team? You know, Andy Young, one of my friends says, I see dead people. 
You need to have this in your mind very clear. These definitions will help you build because they will keep you on track. The moment you think you got something, you don't if, it's, if you cannot run it through these filters. Right? Next. So, in my mind, for me, it was easy. The four-point game plan that Larry Waddell talks about, it was an easy thing for me. Right? Next. Everyone, every new recruit needs a recruit. Okay? So, we're going to pass every new recruit through these four points. Every new recruit needs a recruit. Number two, every new recruit attends the next meeting. Everyone. Number three, every new recruit becomes a client. There are exceptions, but that needs to be your mindset. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Number four, every new recruit races to district leader. Races, sprints to district leader. So if you recruit somebody and you have focus, urgency, and work ethic over these four things, you will start building a team, right? when you have four legs that are 4D, right? Next. Uh, you may not be able to see these numbers, but I, I'm just, I just put, putting this up there to prove a point. This is Mike Toro on the left, a huge uh, giant in, the, in this company. In the middle is Hubert Humphrey, who was a giant, giant, I think he was the first million dollar earner, right coach? In the company or something like that. He was, at the time, he was huge, right? At one point, he left the company eventually and founded some other, he, I think he went crazy, I don't know. But he's in the middle. And then there's Larry Wydell on the left, right? And Toto was always first, he was bigger, he was winning. And then Huber starts catching him. Imagine like three horses running, right? And the reason why Huber starts catching him is because they, they crank up the recruiting, you see? You cannot see here, but in October of 1979, Toto had 55 recruits in the base, 67,000, and, or the previous month, uh, 54 and 44,000, where Hewer had 47 and 33,000, and Wydell, who was a dud, had 8 and 8,500. The previous month, he had zero by 4,700, who can relate? One by, what, right? Five by 1,400. Dots, like a dot status, right? Next. And then Hubert catches on, I mean, Toto keeps on moving. He takes the recruiting to 30, from 32 to 96 to 200 to 270 to 300. To almost 300, 300. 248 recruits in a month in the base shop. That yielded 189,000. But then Hubert catches on and he takes his numbers to 300. And then eventually to the 500s. His base shop premium goes way over 200,000. So he takes on total, and then Wydell starts catching fire, and then goes from 7 to 15 to 18 to 32 to 157 to, at the end here, Wydell is number one. Why? Because he's out recruiting everybody else. Now, is that the only answer? No, but I'm telling you, it's an answer. And if you, if you focus on that long enough, hard enough, eventually you will have more people than anybody. So you will be everybody. Next. So this is what Wydell looked, at, uh, looked like by himself in 71, four <laughs> people in 1980. He makes a decision he's going to recruit uh, 1,800 people when he moved to North Carolina from Atlanta. So that's what he looked at in 81, when that kind of exploded. Next. And 82 looked like this. And you click one more. Every red circle is an RVP. And every blue cir circle is somebody that is ready to go RVP. But back then, when the men were real men, they had to move to a different state. You, you became an RVP, you gave up your whole team and chose a step where a state where nobody was in, you were a pioneer. Those blue were pioneers, ready to move. The, the, the one that's highlighted on the left is Andy Young. Some of you may not, may not know Andy, but he has a huge hierarchy. Next. 
This is Andy's number. He went from there to Maryland, right? So as a 23-year-old in the coal market, he was going to school playing a ball in Wake Forest in, in Winston-Salem. And so he starts, you know, great start, one by 700, right? Oh. But he realizes, he goes to district, he's the district for a year. He understands that he needs the, uh, district leaders, right? So he recruits like 12 or 13 people in three weeks in the coal market, prospecting like 700 people, because you need to do whatever you need to do. In five months from July to December, he was running a 35 by 31,000. He gives that up to Wydell, moves to Maryland, does, starts all over again in his war market, recruits 15 people, and in seven months he's running a 100 by 100. Seven months with only f f 15 directs, 18 directs. How? With that focus that we're talking about, right? It's about driving deep. Next, you have to believe. You have to believe that this can happen to you. You have to find ways to believe. Next, and then you have to decide. You have to decide. It has to be a decision that comes, that's between you and God. It's not between you and your spouse, you and your children, you and your family. It's between you and God, only you know. And then next, you have to commit. <coughs> Commitment, it's the difference. Commitment is what's going to take you to the promised land. We'll talk again to, uh, with you this afternoon, give you more on mindset and some changes you need to make. We're excited to be your teammates, and we are so looking forward to seeing this team dominate in the next decade. It's your time.